Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. Did you know that your Toyota Tacoma's four-wheel drive system needs some maintenance, some maintenance from you once a month? You know, I've been thinking, I've been a little bit remiss in doing this myself. I've had the truck for a while, and I think I've only put it in four-wheel drive once, and it's been a while. So I thought I'd whip out the manual just to refresh myself because not doing it all the time, you kind of forget what you're doing. And maybe this will help a few folks out there uh, that have four-wheel drives because you know, everybody buys four-wheel drives even though we don't really need them. And you need to do these maintenance things. So first of all, I've got the manual. We're gonna go by what Toyota says. It says here, and it's under four-wheel drive system, it's on page 303 of my manual. It says here, two-wheel drive, high-speed position. So that's what you drive in normally. It says, use this for normal driving on dry, hard surfaces or roads. Uh, this position gives greater economy, the quietest ride and the least wear, both on tires and the whole system. For high, High-speed position four-wheel drive. Use this for driving only on tracks, trails, roads, I don't know, that permit the tires to slide. Like off-road, icy, or snow-covered roads, this position provides greater traction than two-wheel drive. Obviously, all four wheels are going, right? And then, of course, there's the four low. Low-speed position four-wheel drive. Use this for maximum power and traction. Use four low for climbing or descending steep hills, off-road driving, and hard pulling in sand, mud, or deep snow. With either one of these, an indicator light will come on on the screen. Now, further, this is where the maintenance part comes in. It says four-wheel drive usage frequency. It's on page 306, a little blurb right before the red warning box, which we'll get to in a minute. These are important things. It says you should drive in four-wheel drive for at least 10 miles, 16 kilometers if you're Canadian, each month. This will assure that the front drive components are lubricated. So you're supposed to be doing this once a month for 10 miles. Now, how to get into four-wheel drive. And we're only going to cover four-wheel drive high here because the video will become 20 minutes long and that's just too long. I'll cover that later on. If you're interested in four-wheel low, leave a comment down below. We'll make a different video about that. But it says here, shifting between two-wheel drive, which is normal high driving, if you will, or rather, now it says here, shifting between two-wheel drive and four high. Two-wheel drive, of course, is normal driving. One, reduce vehicle speed to less than 62 miles per hour. So you have a pretty good range there. That's a hundred kilometers per hour if you're Canadian. Uh, turn the front wheel drive control switch to four high. The four wheel drive indicator will come on. That's it. Pretty darn simple, right? Shifting from four high to two wheel drive. So going back, in other words, turn the front wheel drive control switch to two wheel drive. This can be done at any speed. Uh, you need not depress the pedal manual or the clutch pedal manual rather manual transmission only the four-wheel drive indicator light will go off Now there are a few warnings here. We're gonna go out and do this by the way. So stay tuned We're gonna do it in my truck. It says here caution while driving never shift the front wheel drive control from two-wheel drive to four high if the wheels are slipping so if you're already having traction loss Wait until the wheels are stopped, stop, before you switch it. Stop the slipping or spinning before shifting, like I just said. From normal driving on dry and hard surface roads, use the two-wheel drive position, we know that. Driving on dry and hard surface roads in four high or four low position may cause drive component leakage, uh, seizure, or other problems resulting in an accident. Further, it may cause tire wear and increase fuel consumption. Well, I can guarantee you it's going to decrease your fuel economy. It's going to cost more gas to drive in four wheel. And it's only really going to affect your tires if you're turning a lot. It's when you turn and that four wheel drive system is grabbing everything that you really have problems. Avoid turning suddenly in four high or four low position. If you do turn suddenly, the difference in turning speeds between the front 
and rear wheels may have a similar effect to braking, thus making driving difficult. And I can attest to that, I've done it. You don't wanna make a sharp turn when you're in four wheel drive. It's take, it feels like it's putting a lot of effort on the system. Do not shift the front wheel drive control switch when the vehicle is turning or when wheels are spinning freely on the ground. So you should be moving in a straight direction. Don't do it when you're turning or when the wheels are slipping. Now, we're gonna go out, jump in my truck. I'm gonna make a turn and then I'm gonna switch it into four wheel drive high and we're gonna drive for about 10 miles. I'm interested to see if I feel any difference and if I see a big drop in fuel economy while I'm doing this, so let's go. Okay, we're in the truck right now, obviously. A couple of things to point out before we get moving. Uh, if you don't know where the indicator is and if you don't have this, you don't have four wheel drive, uh, it's right here. To turn it to four low, you can see low here and then you have to push apparently according to what it says here, to go to four to low. So to turn to four high, just turn it to the right, right? So this lines up with this line. I know most people probably know that. One other thing, let's check the fuel economy. Right now we're at 17.7. After I run it in four wheel drive, we'll check and see if this goes down any. Okay, we're gonna turn on to a straightaway. As soon as I get straight, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up which is right now. So I'm gonna go ahead. I just went to four wheel drive and the indicator is on the screen. Uh, might have felt a little bit more, uh, and I'm sure I did, a little bit more uh, pressure on the engine, if you will. I didn't hear anything. I didn't feel any clunk, nothing odd. So now I'm just driving straight. Uh, we're going to go for about 10 miles. Let me look at the gauge here. We're going to go for about 10 miles, and then I'll come back on and give you my final thoughts on it. And I'll bring you back on right before I switch it back down or up, whatever, to two-wheel drive so we can hear that if there's anything to hear. I've driven the recommended 10 miles. Um, 55 miles an hour is the road I'm on, so I've been driving at a pretty steady 55 miles an hour for 10 miles. Now, we're going to go ahead and switch it back. It's going to turn it to the left, back to two-wheel drive. And the indicator light flashed, and then it went away. While I'm looking at the screen, fuel economy did not change. 17.7 miles per gallon. A um, couple things I noticed. It does put more stress on the engine, of course. It's turning two more tires, right? Or maybe three. I don't know if the Tacoma is normally one wheel drive or two. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, definitely puts a, a lag on the truck uh, or uh, more stress on the engine. You can feel it, particularly when you go back to two wheel drive. I guess it must be two wheel uh, from four wheel drive. One thing I do want to address because I know it's going to come up, and that is tire wear. You know, <laughs> As long as you're going straight, you're not making sharper turns, like turning onto a different street, let's say, where you're really taking that right angle turn, uh, you should be okay. I mean, if you're just driving straight on a hard asphalt and you're not spinning your tires and stuff, it doesn't make any difference whether you're in four wheel drive or not, four wheel drive high. So that's not really a concern. I would not recommend sharp turns Gentle sweeping turns is what you want. I experienced a couple of those in my drive today and not really a big deal. I didn't feel anything. And I must say, except for the strain you can feel on the engine, the power, if you will, you'd never know you went to four wheel drive in the Tacoma or that you were even driving in four wheel drive. So yeah, I'll take a look at your gauge cluster once in a while. If you have little ones or maybe you accidentally hit that, you could switch to four wheel drive and not even know it. So if you see the four wheel drive indicator and you didn't mean for it to be there, and your truck feels kind of gutless, make sure that you switch back to two wheel drive. Again, this is something that according to the manual, you should do once a month. I'm guilty of not doing that myself to keep everything lubricated. Make sure you do it in the right conditions. Again, leave a comment. Let me know if you want me to do the four-wheel drive low version. Uh, we'll try that too. It's basically the same, except lower speeds, different conditions, uh, and you have to push the button. Definitely would not run in four-wheel drive low unless conditions warrant doing it. Let me know if you want to see that. And don't forget, click that subscribe button too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.